Hello, Minimal Fam. I've got you in my kitchen today. It's my first time filming in the new kitchen, so it's exciting. Is this going to be an extravagant, really complicated recipe video day? No, absolutely not. If you've watched any of my videos, you know, as with everything in my life, I keep things simple and diet for me is no exception for that. While I have extreme simplicity with how I eat. It is always healthy and nourishing. And for me, that is much more joyful than following a 20, 30 step recipe that takes an hour to prepare. I live alone and I'm always cooking just for myself and I don't do meal prepping or really cooking for the next day at all. I really just prepare what I'm going to eat in that moment because I really want to just be in tune with what I actually want to eat in that moment and I just don't like leftovers in general so I keep things very simple in the kitchen but while some people may think it's bland or unimpressive or just too too simple to the point where it's not exciting people tend to equate complicated exciting recipes with nourishment and while those simply those definitely can be I can appreciate those. My, I have many wonderful chefs in my family, especially my sister. She can make amazing plant-based food for me that took many, many steps and many different ingredients. And I can go to wonderful restaurants that have really incredible flavor. I'm not averse to those things. I'm just not dependent on that type of variety and that type of complication, if you will, for my meals to, to feel satisfied. In fact, it's usually the opposite. I, from just very, very simple ingredients, I do feel satisfied and nourished. And I feel more of a connection to my food when I kind of just see it as it comes, if you will. And I don't have to do all these crazy complicated things, but I'm eating it as close to grown as possible. That for me makes me feel more connected to nature and what nature, the abundance of nature that is given to me through these foods. And when you eat like this, your taste, your your palate really does change, I think. If you're used to having a ton of crazy sauces and spices and things cooked in a certain way or covered in oils and all sorts of different things, yes, that can be delightful, but it can get you almost addicted to, in an intoxicating way, to those types of flavors and needing things to be smothered in things that aren't really the thing. That was such an eloquent way to put it, but I think you understand what I mean versus picking up something like this peach that I'm about to eat and oh my god does anything really beat the smell of a ripe peach in summertime I don't know it's phenomenal but just this this just came like this this is on a little tree and we can pluck it and just eat it as is and the flavor is incredible and that's for me far more satiating and enriching and nourishing than a peach flavored something or so just something that has to have a ton of different ingredients. Um, that's just not really how my diet is. So people get perplexed when they see how I eat and think I'm doing it out of austerity or out of just too much discipline or out of deprivation. But for me, it is absolutely abundance, this level of simplicity. And I feel great nourishment from it. I feel great energy from it. It digests well and it just feels right for me. So I'm going to share with you. It's been a minute since I've shared uh, a what I eat in a day video. So I'm going to do that today. It is a day off today. I took five days of, off of work for my birthday. This is the last relaxing day and I was just lounging at the pool earlier. It is quite a bit later in the day. I don't eat breakfast right away when I wake up. I never have back even when I was training eight to 10 hours a day and swimming, I had to get up so early for practice and could just never eat right away in the morning. It's just not how my body is wired, but I am not going to give you any sort of prescription in these videos. And it's actually one of the reasons I've been hesitant to put out more of these videos is because I don't want this to be monkey see, monkey do. Oh, this YouTuber is doing this, so now I'm gonna copy her exactly. Please do not. Uh, that is not what I promote here. Well, I will give some gen general guiding principles about how I eat. Ultimately, how you eat needs to be up to you. And I think that's the problem we get into with so many things in society is we, it's this like the, the savior complex or the guru complex of just wanting to have something outside of ourselves, have all of the answers. And while yes, there are some guiding principles that can be helpful, especially if you really are trying to make changes, 
it ultimately, with everything I talk about, whether it's minimalism or philosophy or spiritual pursuits or athletic pursuits or pursuits of passion, you need to be your own barometer. You need to start to learn to check in with yourself and experiment. And you can listen to all the science on something or all the advice on something or all the influencers on something, which by the way, please don't call me an influence here. <laughs> I'm not here to influence here. I'm here to share and connect but also, and maybe give some tools. But at the end of the day, the only person influencing you should be you. So you can listen to these sort of suggestions or just observe other people's lifestyle, whether it's what they're eating or what they're consuming or how they're curating their home or what they're doing for a living or what books they're reading or the list goes on to infinitum. At the end of the day, do the experiments for yourself. See how you feel. If something is adding value, continue with it. If it is not, you need to stop and pull back. But especially with diet, I am not in your body. I am not living your lifestyle. You could have a vastly different needs than me. You could be maybe quite a bit older or quite a bit younger, or you could be a woman that's in menopause, or you could be a woman that has young children, or a woman that's pregnant or nursing, or someone that's a high level athlete, or someone that's never done any type of sport in their life. Your needs are going to vary quite a bit differently depending on your lifestyle and not to mention all of the the emotional factors that go into it. We tend to get so caught up in black and white nutrients like, you know, plug this into Conromito and it says I'm okay, but first of all, with that type of thing, you can that's based on estimates in a laboratory that happened, but not necessarily there's no way to tell what your body's actually absorbing and what your individual body actually needs, which is why I don't follow any sort of scientific guidelines as a vegan of, I need to get make sure I'm hitting this many grams of protein or this many grams of fat or this type of you know L-lysine, whatever. I know that's some kind of nutrient I've not heard. Some people say may say that's incredibly foolish and dangerous, but my response to that is that humans have gotten by without all of that modern science in the past. There is a level of intuition that we have cut ourselves off from for the sake of just being so caught up in mental constructs that we've forgotten our, our deeper connection to spirit and our own intuition in our bodies that is inherent. And you can say that's wrong. Well, I can say, okay, well, how do all the other animals in nature get by then without their chronometers? Do, do whales or tigers or bears or panthers or snakes have to go online and speak to scientists and go see their nutritionists about what to eat? No, they don't. They just eat what they are programmed to eat. And sometimes it is adaptable based on say like coyotes will eat whatever the hell's available in their environment. And there's other animals that cannot adapt like that. That's an evolutionary skill. But my point is, you don't have to rely or you while well, those things can be helpful science and you know nutritional facts and all of that at the end of the day there's an inherent wisdom in your body that if you start tapping into that and paying attention to what feels right and what make gives you energy what digests well what just feels good for you to eat I think you're going to have a lot more success versus just blindly reading articles about things or blindly copying YouTubers, including copying YouTubers like myself. So I will come back to my original point of these eating this way feels right for me. It feels good for me. I did find some initial guidelines from other YouTubers and science when I was transitioning to eating a fully vegan diet. However, I as far as how I eat and how often I eat and what portions I eat, that's up to me and how I feel and not someone else's prescription. So you need to find those things for yourself. And the only general guidelines I would give are eat enough, eat when you feel hunger and stick to above all, no matter what you're eating, because not everyone that's watching this video today is vegan and certainly not everyone watching is going to want to go vegan. Maybe you're just wanting to see how a minimalist eats or just wanting to be more healthy in general, including more plant-based foods, but still sticking to whatever. Or maybe you're carnivore and just curious and that's okay, we can still be friends. I, this is, I do not want this channel to be an echo chamber, but at the end of the day, eat real food. I think anyone across the board who's in trying, trying to improve the quality of your health, whether you're in the paleo or carnivore or vegan or 
intermittent fasting, whatever camp, I, I think something we can all agree on is eat real food. The processed modern day Frankenstein food is not good and that is definitely not what I promote. So that was a very long winded intro, but I think it's important to talk about these things when we're talking about nutrition, because at the end of the day, as with most things I, I speak about, it comes to personal responsibility and self-reliance and being your own barometer and tuning in with yourself. So. Without further ado, now that that's out of the way, let's get into what I'm eating for today. I'm gonna to shift the camera down today and show you what is for my breakfast. Okay, so of course I have my wooden bowl. I eat every single meal out of this. I absolutely love it. Let's see what's for breakfast, meal one. I've got some cotton candy grapes. These are amazing. They actually taste like cotton candy. Not like the fake stuff though. I never even really liked that growing up, but it has that sort of flavor just, but with the naturalness of being a grape. Um, they are organic, of course. Grapes are something you do always wanna buy organic because they are on the dirty dozen list of things that will get the most contaminated by pesticides. So I know organic is hard to afford for everyone with everything, but if you are buying grapes, I would definitely recommend getting organic ones. So we've got some cotton candy grapes. I have some amazing peaches. They smell incredible. They are nice and squishy and ripe. A lot of people eat fruit that is unripe, so you're not getting the full nutritional benefits from it. You're not getting the fructose that you need and the other nutrients are not matured either and it just won't taste as good or digest as well. So with peaches, you definitely wanna be able to smell it and it should have some nice softness when you touch it. So these ones are ready to go. And then I also have some beautiful, I hope they don't fall out, major old dates. These are a staple in my diet. I eat them almost every day. And these are from a local farmer in Indio, I believe, or the Coachella Valley, which is just a couple hours from me. So they're nice and soft and squishy. Okay, let's make my bowl. All right, here she is. Look at all that beautiful color. Okay, I'm gonna go eat this now. Oh my God. It really tastes like cotton candy. Ten out of ten. Peaches. Damn. Ten out of ten. Oh my god. The dates I know are gonna be good. I rate my fruit always, by the way. A ten out of ten, ten out of ten fruit day. It's a good way to start the day. Cheers. Okay, so admittedly today is kind of a weird eating schedule. My breakfast was really more of a lunch. Um, if you saw the time, it was around two o'clock. 
Does that mean I'm prescribing intermittent fasting is the one and only way and that is what I adhere to every single day and that is what you must do? No, it's not. That's just how it ended up today. Some days I eat as early as 9 a.m. depending on my work schedule if I was up at 5.30 and that's when my break is and I need to get some fuel in before my shift or other days it's a balanced three square meals a day at normal meal times uh, but today it's just going to be twice and every once in a while it's just one gigantic one. Does that mean what else I'm prescribing for optimal health or this is the one and only way? No, as I said, Please don't copy me or t keep take this as an exact rubric. This is just how it ended up for me. The overarching theme is listening to your body for that day and accommodating what your body is asking you for. I wasn't very hungry when I got up, so I waited till I was hungry and then I ate when I was hungry. And then I got into a nice flow in the afternoon of doing some filming for another video, doing some editing on this video, getting back to comments, and then just enjoying the outside. So I really wasn't hungry yet until now. I am quite hungry and rather than this, my second meal being a strict lunch, it's basically dinner time. So I'm going to do a giant dinner in kind of like act one and act two. And that's just how it's gonna end up today. So please take this all with a grain of salt. Remember, listen to your body, eat when it feels right to you. Many people out there are, they need a giant breakfast right when they wake up. So I'm not telling you don't do that just because I don't do it. If that's what works for you and feels right, then please do that. This is just to show the general types of foods that I am eating, but as I said earlier, you gotta be your own boss. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get to act one. What do I have here? I've got some orange bell pepper, some cilantro, or for my European friends out there, coriander. I have a nice and ripe avocado. I have these beautiful heirloom cherry tomatoes. I love all the fun different colors in that. And then I've got a red onion and some Kalamata olives and a lime and salt. So very simple basic ingredients and I'm going to put this all together and make sort of a saladless salad or a lettuceless salad. Um, I've not actually made this before. I just had sort of the vision of it in my head. Not that this is going to be overly complicated, but I just think it's going to be a fun texture together, almost like a giant edible salsa, but not overly spicy. So hopefully it turns out cool, but I don't know. We'll see. So let's get to it. Forgot to mention, I'm also going to put some cucumber in there.
All right, here's the finished product. So again, it's cucumber, heirloom cherry tomatoes, onions, cilantro, avocado, orange bell pepper, olives, and some fresh squeezed lime juice with salt and a touch of garlic powder. This is pretty big, as you can see, but I'm about to tuck in and eat this whole thing. I am super excited about this. I think it looks beautiful. And it's very simple. As you can see, there was no like technique or skill or recipe to follow this. this. It's really just my favorite veggies and fruits, which fun fact, cucumbers and tomatoes and avocado and olives and even orange bell peppers are actually all fruits. Fun fact of the day. Uh, but it's just very fresh and very nourishing and straight from the earth. And I think it looks beautiful. So let's tuck into this. Let me give you a bite to see how it tastes. Actually, you know what? This is more of a spoon type of situation. Let's do a spoon. I did do all like little baby bird, just tiny chops of everything. So everything is kind of the same size. So you can get a satisfying bite with a mixture of all the flavors. Let's see how this goes. Mmm. Yeah, that's a total win. If you don't like cilantro, I know some people hate it. You could certainly do like dill or another parsley that has more of a mild flavor, but I love cilantro. Mm. This is a total win. I'm happy. Okay, I'm gonna eat this now. Cheers. I'm kind of dying over this right now, actually. It's it's so good. I'm so happy. I made something new. Okay, we are back for part two of dinner. I have some organic white basmati rice and a Japanese sweet potato, or at least I think it's the Japanese one. I got both. I'll know when I cut into it. Either way, it's going to be great. And then I have this plant strong Indian lentil stew. It's got lentils and chickpeas and brown rice. So I've got rice on rice and a ton of different herbs and spices. It's super delicious. There was this show back in the early 2000s, way before the day of YouTube people cooking and showing on that. Us back in the day, we had to suffer and watch on the Food Network. And even though I've never been a chef my entire life, I had just graduated from college and was looking for work and not knowing what to fill my days with and I got majorly addicted to the Food Network and there's this one show semi-homemade with Sandra Lee I don't know maybe it's still on you can let me know but she would just sort of jerry-rig together recipes of things kind of made but then using things that were already pre-made and the idea was for like the busy mom on the go and I am not a busy mom on the go, but I do like to keep things simple. So this is kind of going to be that. I'm cooking the rice and the sweet potato and then just heating up this little prepackaged stew and I'm going to throw it all in a bowl and it will just be a giant pile of stuff I like to eat and it's going to be delicious. I will doctor it up with my garlic powder and Bragg allspice on the potatoes. I put that on everything and probably a touch of pink sea salt to round it all together but it's just going to be really filling, really hearty, tons of carbs. Yes, that's what I live off of, but some protein in there too. And that's going to be my dinner. So I'm gonna make that now. Okay, here's the finished product. I did add some of this Primal Kitchen, my special sauce. I've talked about this before. I'm definitely addicted to this. I added it in some of the rice and then sort of garnished it on top to give it a little bit more zing. And I did add some cilantro for color and the flavors will go nicely together too. So 
Me being me, as per usual, I am going to do all of my dishes first and then I'm going to sit down and enjoy this giant bowl of food. This may look like a lot, but bear in mind, I did eat pretty light. Fruits and vegetables are pretty light throughout the day. Eating on a vegan diet, you will get used to larger portions because plant foods are just naturally calorically less dense. So that's why I'm always eating out of this big bowl. And while I did eat pretty light during the day, this is a very hefty dinner to round it out. So I'm definitely meeting all of my nutritional needs for the day. And I'm just wired like that. I like eating a little bit lighter during the day while I'm buzzing around and getting things done and then eating a huge massive dinner when I can finally slow down for the day. That's just what works for me. You may be totally opposite. That is okay. I am not telling you how to, how or when to eat. These are just the types of foods I eat that make me feel amazing and that are simple and easy to prepare and come straight from the earth, which always makes me happy. So I'm gonna do my dishes and then I'm going to tuck in to this beauty here. Thanks for watching today. Bye. One quick note about dessert. I do like dessert, but it is not the typical sweets because I got so much fruit in and so many carbohydrates in throughout the day. My glucose needs are met, so my body really doesn't ever crave sweets at the end of the day, but I actually crave something a little bit more savory and just a heavier satiating thing. So cashews or mixed nuts or a vegan cashew cheese spread on some kind of gluten-free toast. Any combination of that is usually my go-to for dessert, so I'm gonna enjoy these now. Cheers and have a good night.